Back here on The Herd, special guest joining us right now, former NFL cornerback, a star in Cleveland. Then he went to Pittsburgh, played for Tomlin. Joe Hayden is with us. Uh, Joe, 12 seasons in the NFL. Um, Very exciting, huh? Great run in Cleveland. Oh, it was a good time. Should we we open with the Manziel questions or just skip and forget about that? (laughs) Let's just blank that out and get right to the current NFL because there's a lot happening, Joe. Um, Obviously, I I want your reaction as a cornerback to the Trayvon Diggs Big mm-hmm. signing by Dallas. They're going to keep him in the fold. I thought he was a little overrated. I know he had a mm-hmm. lot of interceptions, but he did get cooked pretty often. Gave yeah. him a lot of yards. Um, where are you on Diggs and the Cowboys? Uh, I'm really happy that they gave him the deal. Um, I'm a really good, a b- really good friend, friend and oh. fan of Diggs. Um, he's from Maryland, just like me, so yeah, we're yeah. from the same area. Um, but I think he he takes a lot of chances. I mean, it's definitely going to be um, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I think he wins more than he loses. Um, and at the same time, I think he's just now with Stefan Gilmore on the other side. Yeah. I think having him to be able to just teach him a little more like, look, we don't have to always bait and, bait and switch like that. So I think having another vet on that side uh, with Gilmore being a future Hall of Famer, I think it's going to help out tri- Diggs uh, tremendously. Yeah, I, I wonder this defense, you know, it's going to be good. Parsons, um, they're both cornerbacks. Dan mm-hmm. Quinn knows defense. I, wh- what's the ceiling for these guys? Can they can they finally get back to a Super Bowl? Is that realistic? Man, I don't know. You jumped to all the way to the Super Bowl. I'm just, we got to win some playoff games here, right, guys? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of them. Um, I, I think they can be successful. Offense, defense, they have all the players. It's just like tight games. You got to have Dak ended up finishing them, some of those games for them. And uh, just I think the defense, they can close out some of these games with Parsons getting some strip sacks, with um, our boy getting some picks. I think that would be really good for them. Yeah, interesting you bring up Dak. Um, I don't know. I... He's like a top 10-ish quarterback, but he led the league in picks last year, and he missed Mm. like four or five games. Um, I don't know. It's just tough to kind of analyze him. Like, he's faced the Niners two years in a row in the postseason and hasn't really done anything. I I don't know. Is he holding Dallas back, or is that too harsh? I think it's a little harsh. You know, I I mean, I think think he has a high ceiling. I think that he can still come back. I think we give him a little more time. We give him this year um, just to come back uh, healthy, play the whole season, just stay on, keep his feet under him. Um, with C.D. Lamb having another year, just with those weapons that he has, too. I think that uh, we just give him a little bit of time. I think Dak will be able to okay. be all right. Optimistic. Give him a chance. Give him a chance. I, I like it, Joe. Optimistic. Uh, let's go to the Steelers. Um, I uh, They're one of my teams this year. I kind of mm-hmm. think – I like what I saw from Pickett last year. I love the defense healthy, but mm-hmm. I do have questions about the secondary. You know, they got a lot of new guys in there, um, and you played for Tomlin. I'm just mm-hmm. curious, um, your thoughts on Pittsburgh and kind of the newish secondary for with Tomlin. Um, I, I love they brought in Patrick Peterson. Yeah. You know, we can't forget about him. I think Pat is going to be a crafty, crafty vet uh, back there. Mink of his Patrick. Like, yeah. I don't think anybody talks about how really good he is. I think coming from Miami, just continuing the ball and could create turnovers for that defense. And we didn't have T.J. Watt last year too he was help, he was hurt a lot of the year and he's literally a game changer yeah. every game i played with them he had an interception he had a pick yeah. he was doing something to change the game um so i think just with those level of ballers with coach tomlin and his coaching style and just the way he's going to get the best out of his players can he pick it with another year under his belt yeah. just being able to kind of you know help the team not not don't lose the game just try, help them. we can win a couple with you so yeah, yeah. i think uh i think that'll work out a lot for the Steelers. so i know the audience heard you say we with pittsburgh now oh. i say we with the jets i didn't play for okay. them shocker uh but i root for them so do you align yourself we with pittsburgh or cleveland because you spent I, more time in cleveland i did seven in cleveland i did five in pittsburgh it's kind of hard to detach you know like it's, <laughs> i love both cities i love yeah. both fan bases um i want them to be successful because when i was there that's all that i was trying to do I wanted to win for Cleveland tried to win for Pittsburgh um but you just know you know the guys you know the people that are there still you have relationships with them so I feel like those are my friends I'm like yeah we're in it together <laughs> but you know yeah. just trying to be uh constructive and just let from an outside perspective what do I really see from the team mm-hmm. so it's kind of a little like oh we but no, yeah, you guys yeah. need to tighten up a little bit uh, let's just talk about Cleveland so when you got to the Browns uh, obviously first round pick out of mm-hmm. Florida uh, a gentleman by the name, I think LeBron James was uh, a big deal in Cleveland at the time, maybe. I think uh, Kyrie Irving. We passed in the air, me and LeBron, 2010, when I got to Cleveland, he was going to Miami. Oh. So that was kind of, that was tough for me because I'm a big, big, big LeBron James fan. Okay. Biggest fan of LeBron, I think, of anyone in the league. And then when 2011, Kyrie came. So then I was going to every single Cavs game. Kyrie and Tristan came. Those are my homies. Floor sees Dan Gilbert bring me to the game, and we didn't. We weren't too successful, you know. We won about 20, 20 games. Uh, stands were kind of empty, but that's was I was always there. Big, big fan of wow. basketball. So when LeBron came back, 
Dan was like, Joe, you were loyal. You were here. Yeah. We won 20 games. Like, you're going to be floor seats to all of these games. So then when we ended up, they ended up playing Golden State, Bron came back. I mean, that was that was some of the best time of my life in Cleveland. Wow. So you, obviously you have a relationship with LeBron. Uh, you yeah. guys are friendly. Um, yeah, I guess just give the audience a window. What it's like, what's it like hanging out with LeBron? Are you guys playing cards? Yes. You're playing hoops. We're playing uh, cards. We're okay, playing cards. Okay. When I hang out with LeBron, it's more like a like an after a game with some of his teammates. Uh, do a little bit of cards, um, a little wine. He's really into wine. Really <laughs> into tequila. Is a Lobos. <laughs> Shout out to Lobos. Uh, <laughs> soft flex for LeBron, but. Um, <laughs> Just yeah, just he's a really really cool dude, man. I love the way he moves like Obama though. You got he has security, he has drivers. He's pulling up to a spot through the back door, and next you know, Bron just pops in. So it's 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 a it's a it's an experience to be with Bron. One thing I heard from somebody who's like a body double for LeBron is that uh, he gets massages like r- almost every single day, and he has to ask his nutritionist, what he can eat before he puts mm-hmm. it in it. I mean, like, that's kind of crazy stuff. Did you have such a strict regimen playing in the NFL? Uh, not at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not even close. I think but at the be- that, I think that's why he has so much longevity. That's why mm. LeBron is LeBron. He's 20 years in. I think it took me a good, my first five years, I was still eating McDonald's and Popeye's, not going to wow. lie. Yeah, I was, I was a wild man. But after that, I finally started realizing, like Sheldon Brown showed me, um, Eric Wright. It was just a couple of players that I had on my team that was like, look, Joe, if you want to keep this for a long time, you're you're 21 now. You can just wake up, not even stretch and come play. It's not going to be like yeah. that for long. So I think after my fourth year, I really started getting, I got a, a nutritionist. I had a, a PT, somebody that gave me uh, massages, a stem and needle, all that stuff. So I think that's what people are starting to do now that can make you play that long. It's like, how long do you really have? If you can do that for yeah. 10 to 15 years, to be able to live for the rest of your life to know you didn't sell the game short. I mean, I think Braun does a great job. I know he spends like a million dollars or something on his body at least a year. It's ridiculous. Wow. That's pretty cool. It's a, it's a great return on yeah. investment. I'll tell yeah. you that. Certainly. Um, so you were telling me before we came on that uh, you happen to be friends with Aaron Rodgers, and I thought we'd mm-hmm. you know, crowbar the Jets into the conversation here. Uh, tell me about Rodgers. You guys are kind of buddies? We're kind of buddies, man. It's really through my friend uh, Randall Cobb. He's married to my wife's cousin, um, so that's how we kind of had a relationship. So we kick it sometimes. Um, Aaron's just a really good dude. I met him at a couple weddings. So, you know, just, he's my favorite quarterback. Oh. Terrible. That's probably he's, Aaron. That's probably Aaron. Aaron. Like, Joe, yeah, don't be yeah. talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah, he's a really good guy, a really good quarterback. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks ever. Just arm talent, just the way he can move in the pocket, uh, deliver the ball. Um, I think the only one close to him in my eyes is Patrick Mahomes. That I, Those are my two favorite quarterbacks. Really? No, no Brady? I mean, Brady's the best of all time, greatest. I'm talking about just arm talent. Uh-huh. When I like to see them throw the ball, like just watching the ball come out of his hands, just see the anticipation and things like that. Aaron Rodgers just has a different, huh. just a, a different swag to it. Which quarterbacks did you not like facing? Because whether I did not like or... facing Tom Brady. I did not like <laughs> facing Aaron Rodgers. I did not like facing Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Yeah, wow. those those guys. Did, did you see it from Mahomes? Like, I mean, you know, it took a year. He's kind of sat out uh, watching, and then he comes in and is like, oh, my gosh. Did I see it? So, honestly, we played them, I think it was 2017 or 2018 in Pittsburgh. I was hurt. He threw for 20. 20- 23 pass, 23 for 28, 346 <laughs> yards, six touchdowns, five incompletions, 28 passes total, six touchdowns. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like one of the best performances I've seen. So so when we saw the, the stat that he's the eighth pi- highest paid quarterback in the NFL, and when Burrow signs his mm-hmm. deal, Mahomes is going to be ninth. Nine. Is there any, you have anything wrong with that? Or, I mean, let me tell you, it's just the way the game goes. It's the next man up. It's the Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's going to probably sign in the next 15 minutes and just pass uh, <laughs> yeah. Justin Herbert. So he's going to have his little time. Um, I, think it's, I think it's just the way that the game is going. Um, and I love Patrick Mahomes for the fact that he signed for a 10-year deal for 500. He's going to make his money. Patrick's, I don't think he's worried about it. I think he's worried about championships. I think he's worried about figuring out how to keep talent around him, how to keep pieces around him. And if they can move around his deal and structure it in all different ways, I don't think he's... Too worried. Yeah. Dude, he owns a, like a baseball team. He's got yeah. some soccer. But yeah. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes is pretty good with them. Revenue streams. Revenue We're streams. We're talking about revenue all over streams. The place. Yes, yeah. You got some. Uh, <laughs> I, I do want to ask. You said quarterbacks. That's where the market's going. Mm-hmm. What about running backs though? They're kind of getting shafted. I don't know if you got you were privy to this call when you were on the Zoom <laughs> as just a friend of somebody, but like it seems kind of bleak, man. I, I I know there's nothing that could be done, but it's a little sad. No. Not a little sad. It's really sad. I feel I feel really, really bad for the running backs. Um, we look at Saquon Barkley, like we said. He's one of the best running backs in the league. He had to fight 
to not get tagged for 10.1 and his contract ended up being $11 million. And then we're not knocking it saying like, when we talk about money in the NFL, it's not like, oh, you need to be happy. You getting 11. All right. But at the same time, when your quarterback, you're better, he's making 40. It just is like, yeah. what are we talking about? And then Christian McCaffrey signed for 16 a year. So there's certain things where you're the best in the business at what you do. You go about your business the right way. You're not a problem in the locker room yeah. you're a good guy you your team once you should be in yeah. there so i just feel like sometimes with that i'm like why are you not giving the dude when you know that you don't have to because he's running back their life expectancy is a little short but we're people yeah. <laughs> we know how good saquon barkley is so i mean it from a business perspective i can see why they don't do it because they don't have to but as a human we like this is that sad i'm like yes that's extremely sad it's very so so you mentioned the quarterback numbers like daniel jones is making like four times what saquon barkley is yes is he four times better than Saquon Barkley? You know he's not. No, no, I need you to say it. Too. <laughs> I know he's I, not. I know we, he's we, not. we, no, everybody does that, you know. Yeah, but yeah. Not, not knocking Daniel at all. But like, it's the, it's just the, it's the nature of the game. Yeah. Uh, give me the wide receiver that talked the most trash to you on the field, that actually oh. might have shook you, college or NFL. Might have shook me. Um, I know you're so not rattled. By Steve anybody. Smith. Oh, talked shit. the craziest trash, but he was actually really nice to me. He was going, <laughs> he was talking to my the other cornerback on my team. Who's so that? I don't let's let us not even come on. Used to be bad. Uh, Wait, why was he talking to him? Uh, cause he was talking to him. Oh. I think yeah, that's what you don't do. You don't start it yeah. with Steve Smith. So I just you know just stayed a little quiet. It was Steve Smith and Michael Crabtree was the one that was talking. Oh. When he was in San Francisco, he was talking so much trash to me. And we were both sponsored by Jordan. I had to have a talk. We did the trip after the season. I'm like, yo, do we have real beef? <laughs> <laughs> but we were up squashing. It was cool. Yeah, just yeah. When he was playing, he's just in his own, just wow. saying so whatever. So he, he got into it with Sherman. You remember that? In the yes, playoffs? yes, yes, yes. I didn't know why Sherman was so angry about oh, that. But goodness. now I guess it's Crabtree. Was I don't big... talk. Michael Crabtree talking crazy to me. I was like, but it was. And you didn't even start it. I didn't he just start came it. at you with yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you handle that? Like, do you does it get in your? Does it bother you at all? No, or? no, no, no. Then I then then I have to get back and then I get in my back. You know, oh, I know normally okay. don't start it, but you know you yeah, gotta finish yeah, it. Yeah. You gotta finish it. Well, not with Steve Smith, who I think has punched out a few teammates. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's early. All right, so I know you're gonna have fun with Shady and company on Speak here next. Um, I gotta. It's only July, but I gotta ask for a Super Bowl pick. Do you have one? It's early, or maybe you could give me a f- two teams in each conference. Um, well, you know, I'm not going to go against Patrick Mahomes. Fair. I'm trying, I'm, I'm thinking right now, Patrick and Travis, they're, they're trying to, they're trying to, they're trying to do the dynasty. They're ready for yeah. it. And he said it, it's going to take three to, to do the dynasty. All right. I think it's about time. So I think they, I think the chiefs, I think the chiefs are going to win it again. Way to go out on a limb, Joe. I mean, look, look you asked me a question. I know. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm legitimately, <laughs> I have a one answer. I think the chiefs are going right, to win give me an NF, How about NFC team? Or do you have a sleeper this year? A sleeper, Anyone who may come out of, out of nowhere and shock some people? I think, no, it's only in the AFC. I'm going, if the Chiefs don't win it, the Bengals or the Bills are going to win it. Bengals are so, so you like favorites a lot, huh? I like, no I, Jets. I like, my, I like the teams that were beating me that I think <laughs> should win. I'm like, these yeah, dudes yeah, are yeah. nice. Like Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, they are deserving. Bon Miller, they are deserving of winning another one. They have a lot of talent so oh by the way you just because you mentioned Diggs, one more thing so tj hushmanzada was on here mm-hmm. earlier this week and he said you know Diggs is like complaining and like it's gonna get in josh allen's head he's gonna try to force feed him the ball this could be bad for buffalo mm-hmm. um do cornerbacks follow that stuff and do you use that in your bag uh to Diggs? man he ain't throwing you the ball josh not, <laughs> you're not even looking your way do you do you he, any of that oh, oh for sure for sure, if he starts getting a little hot, could you see him looking at the quarterback, throwing him like this? Man, you was open on that play. <laughs> it just jog off like ah, missed you. <laughs> like, just, you. Has that rattled any receiver? When you've I don't been? know if it's rattled them, but you see them going at their quarterbacks. I'm like, this anything that's not happy go lucky high five, and I'm like, that that I think that's good. I think that's good for us. Wow. Uh, hopefully, Sauce Gardner uh, does it in the opener. Yeah, that Jets that. Bills. I can't, I can't wait for that. Yeah, he's special. he's special. He's special. Yeah. I'll take it. All right. Him, uh, He's very, yes. Yeah. yes. Joe Hayden, former Browns, Steelers star. He'll be on Speak today. Jo- Joy, uh, Shady, the gang. It should be fun, man. Thanks a lot, Joe Hayden. Thank Good you. stuff. Oh, man. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.